<laughs> did I win or lose? Oh, uh, you lost. Yeah, I lost. Oh, I right. won. Hi guys, sorry about the loss for today. <laughs> uh, it's a tennis match. It's a tennis match, yeah. <laughs> It's been really awesome, really, really awesome to just be in the middle of it and, you know, see all the cosplay and... Yeah, it's, you know, it's great to see some Umbrella Academy cosplay because yeah. uh, I've not really seen anyone I've done these things before. Um, yes. you might, there might be the odd one hanging around, but there's been so many today mm -hmm. now the show's out. Um, and it's great to see, you know, like what the different takes are on the characters. Like the Klaus uh, umbrellas, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. There's, classes, yeah there's, there's a lot of white classes. violins, a lot yeah. of number fives. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's are so cool. Are you surprised by the show's um, sort of well, the show's success, but how fast it's grown. It has yeah. grown very fast, yeah. I, mean, I think it's, it's the thing you always hope for. Like, yeah, you know, I don't think you set out to do any project being like, you guess this is it. This is going to be so big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think you hope that, you know, we had such a great time sh working on it and, and shooting it. And I think we just, and knowing that it's coming from the comics, wanting to, like, make the fan base that it already exists proud and then hope that they, they, understand and see you know the way the the version that is now on their televisions yeah. and like it as much as we enjoyed it so i but i definitely am shocked i did not think it was you know we have no idea because netflix holds all their numbers really close mm. um but it sounds like they are very excited and have been um so and it's great to see the response from the fans you know yeah. like that, i think that's a good telling sign you know when because until I turn up here today, you kind of get an idea that the show's doing well, a bit of online chat and stuff, and people calling you up and going, oh, what's the show, man? It's great. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Well, just um, like that. Yeah, yeah exactly like that. I've got a friend. He's being me too, making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> My face was getting ready. Yeah, exactly. so. yeah, like that, I go, oh. um, I need to stop making faces when there's not many cameras around. Um, but job. yeah, you get it's, it's great to see the response from from the people, you know, and uh, seeing how excited they are about it, which is great because we got so excited about it. Yeah, so it's great. Has it been a big response to the dance scene? The, uh, I think we're alone. Which one? Oh, I think we're alone now. Yeah. Think, oh god, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of people's favorite. Yeah. I think it comes yeah. at the perfect time in the pilot because it's, it's so yeah. heavy and it's so dense and it's like really methodical and slow and everyone you're unpacking yeah. these characters and it kind of comes at a moment where you're like, oh god, I need a break from yeah. all the drama. And I think it's also like it's a great sort of indicator of. The style what, of the yeah, show. Yeah, the style of the mm -hmm. show that you'd never really know what's coming and there's a quirkiness to it. Yeah. That, is unexpected mm -hmm. and that sort of carries on all the way through the show so yeah the, the response has been brilliant for that yeah. yeah and we had a great time doing it <laughs> <laughs> too much fun how, how, how hands on with the creators because on shows like american gods yeah and good omens neil gaiman is very much part of the show running now yeah i wonder because obviously this was the baby of a uh, uh, gabrielle barr and a uh, gerard yeah, Ray. yeah i'm wondering whether they were um that's a long-winded question. No, no, How no. much involvement were they allowed to have on a, on a series of this nature? Yeah. Well, the, the thing is with those two, those two are the creators of the comic and they were exec producers on the show, right? So they had a, a massive input. They were, they were there right from the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, the development of the show. And then Steve Blackman, who is the head showrunner of the show, he is the kind of, he's the one that the day-to-day, -day, the, the genius of the show, really, the, the way it's scoped out is down to him you know and and overseen by those guys who you know had the the comic book in, in mind and the stories mm -hmm. of the comic book yeah uh, but steve blackman is is amazing and he yeah. he really deserves the credit for the show yeah and one last question to know are you aware of the amazing graffiti street level pr that's going on including one in digbeth in birmingham that you're not going to see tonight because you're in a hotel here but it's absolutely no by a guy called street uh, Jim Vision, he's a big graffiti artist. Oh, yeah. And apparently in, in a lot of cities around the world, you've got these absolutely huge, beautiful black and white piece of artwork from Umbrella Academy, and what? they're pretty magnificent. You've yeah, seen I've one, seen right? one in Shoreditch. Yeah. yeah, I actually went and I took a selfie in front of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jim Vision's the guy behind it, look up his artwork online, he's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. That's, yeah. I didn't really know that it was like a thing, that's yeah. really There's one cool. in Liverpool as well, right, is that right? Yeah, yeah. he hasn't been robbed yet though. He hasn't been robbed yet. Really, wow. <laughs> Did, did you go to the source material yourself as part of kind of your research, the, the comics? I think we all, we were encouraged to read it if we wanted to. There was zero pressure because I think Steve really wanted all of us to bring our own takes to the characters. But, you know, I absolutely wanted to know 
where we were coming from. So when I was around the time that I was auditioning, I, I bought both of them and, and read them. Yeah, yeah. It was also the only thing we had, <clears throat> apart from the pilot script, mm -hmm. it was the only thing to draw from yeah. to kind of influence the character choices and stuff very early on. So I was, I mean, I was the first one to be cast like, like in, I think it was like two or three months before someone else was cast. So I had this kind of empty time of going, I need to know more about the show. I need to know more about the character. And so I, I kind of immersed myself in the comics, you know, because it was the only thing I could draw from at that point. Um, but they are, they are a great influence. And I, I think it was really important to sort of find what people fell in love with in the characters in the comic books and then try and bring those things mm -hmm. into the, to the show. Um, during uh, the series, there's a, a really great part for me that I found really moving with you. And you were talking to Pogo and you found out there was, sorry for spoilers guys, but there was, there was no reason for you to be um. on the moon. Mm. And your response to that was so raw, so, so it was really pure. What do you do to prepare, to prepare yourself for such a heartbreaking scene? Um, do you wing it or do you have to put raw onions? Raw onions. Raw onions. Yeah, there's just a, there's a pile of chopped <laughs> onions. <laughs> um, no, the thing is with something like that, you have to really get inside the character's head. Mm. You know, you have to think about what they would have been through. And for me, I was like, imagine, you know, being on your own for that long and thinking your whole life's purpose was for something that ended up being a lie. Yeah. And it was just for nothing. Like for me, that it just had to organically happen, you know, and it had to be something that I just felt because if you force anything like that, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you, the camera sees it all, so you have to feel it. It has to be raw, um, and sometimes it's not easy. You know, sometimes you. you it, but that's when it's a testament to the writing and how clear these characters are on the page. Like I knew who Luther was. I knew what he'd been through. I, I felt like I was him at that point. So, like I say, you let it happen organically. You trust the the things that are going on inside your head. You know, as that character. The, the comic books have a very particular style to the artwork. When you were sort of, you know, you said you had a few months to, to look at it. When you were looking at it, did it sort of cross your mind of how on earth are they going to get that mm. particular <coughs> image translated into a TV show? I would think they yeah. did a fantastic yeah. job I think the biggest it. one for us was Klaus. Mm. Like, yeah. I didn't know. I was comic, like, so. how are they going to do that? That's going to be crazy. But I think that also was Steve was like, I love where this came from and like the the you know, all of these characters have so much to offer and there's so much going on and their powers are so unique and different. But I think he also was like, but I also really want to ground it in reality and, and, and kind of make it more about the drama, about the family dynamics, about the psyche of these characters and not so much about, you know, Robert floating around the house and, mm -hmm. and you know, David he had to, he, swimming a bunch. Swimming around, yeah, yeah. breathing <laughs> underwater. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he had to find a way of making the characters really relatable to everyday people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if you just took it straight from the comics, it would feel so kind of out of this world mm -hmm. that yeah. it's like, well, it's not really relatable. And that's what all of these characters are. They're all so different, but all very relatable in their own ways. They've all got very sort of earthy issues. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got all these issues that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. I was going to say, this is like your third kind of big franchise that you've been part of now. Popular! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Hamilton star. Ah. Exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to ask, is this, is this something you kind of get used to, or, or is it mm. kind of hard to fit in with that huge fan base that follows it? I don't know if you have to mentor Emmy through this, because it's quite a big thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, to answer the first part, I mean, I don't think you ever get used to it no because and also you never really know when you're doing it when you're making it that mm. it's going to be that so uh, this is the first comic-con thing that i've done since the show's been out so this is my first kind of going oh man there's like a growing fan base here that's that's happened quickly yeah so it has the potential to absolutely be another one of these kind of shows um but no you never really get used to it you sort of just take it in your stride i guess and just meet every individual person as as they come along um as for Emmy, she doesn't need any. Oh, help. shut up. <laughs> I'm here because of him. He was like, because I knew because of Game of Thrones and Merlin and Black Sails that he'd been, he kind of was in the con world and had been doing them. And I feel like you did one while we were shooting or something. I can't remember. Uh, but possibly. I was like, what is that? He was like, I got you. So I'm today, I'm here today because he introduced me to his, yeah. his agent. And 
um, I was like, I want to, I want to like be on the ground and like meet the, you know, the people that love this show and love Gerard and, and, and Gabriel's work. And I like, I just, I, it's really, really cool. It's so. also the only, th- like, cause, cause you obviously come from a musical theater background, mm. right? Give us a and, song. Exactly. No. <laughs> and, and you get that immediate sort of fan response right, yeah. when you're there mm-hmm. in the moment. Whereas TV and film, you don't. So yeah. I always find that these things are a great way to see the reaction yeah. that you don't immediately get. Mm-hmm. So you get to see what people really think about it, which is, and it's really nice, you know. Yeah. What are your favourite moments from the season? Oh, oh man. man, there's a few. We always say the group scenes, right? Yeah. We always say that they're really the, fun. Any the of the scenes scene. that we were all together, because there's so many of us and all of our characters splintered off so many times, there was a lot of times where it would like just be Tom and I working for a week together, Ellen and I working for a week together, or like all of us, everyone kind of doing their own thing. So when we got to come together like as a group and, and work on a scene together, those were usually a some of the of best days because we all just get on so well and really, really enjoy enjoy each other's company yeah. um, and our characters are so different you know so when we yeah. do those scenes it's so fun to play with because we and we also got to know our characters and each other's characters quite quickly mm-hmm. so we n- kind of knew how to play with it yeah. how to you know interact and ad lib and, and do a bit of improvising and stuff so yeah. no it was th- those moments are always great I think my my favorite I have like three of my favorite scenes are our dance mm-hmm. are the Agreed. end of episode 8 with Ellen and the Gross. <laughs> and and then the t- the phone booth scene. Yeah, was yeah. Like Which was the last? The phone booth scene was oh, the yeah. very last scene we shot on the show. Of the whole season. And it was like the 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 daylight was. It was a night shoot, and it was a, the daylight was coming up, so we were having to rush to get yeah. this phone booth. They scene kept done. putting like these flats up because yeah, like, like the side, it was like six in the morning, and we were like supposed to be in the yeah. middle of the night. And we had to wrap that night. Yeah, so, but that was um, the last scene that we shot for the whole season. Yeah. So that yeah, that was kind of special as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just, yeah. just photos or? Well, he says, the little bastard finally killed me. <laughs> hey, baby Mario, let's go. Yippee. Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, Pikachu. Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. Over and over again. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <A> helicopter. <laughs>